What's up everybody? Today's video is gonna get right to the point. We're gonna check in with the big three industry insiders, Redfin, CoreLogic, and your favorite Zillow and see what they're saying now in late summer of 2022 about the housing market today and moving forward. So let's just dive right in. So let's start with Zillow so we can see how they compare to CoreLogic and Redfin. According to Zillow's latest report this week on home values and sales forecast July of 2022, Zillow now forecasts 7.8% home value growth over the next 12 months. So from July 2022 to June 2023. So first of all, I'd kind of like to know where is Zillow so we can all move there. But I digress. This has been revised downward from Zillow's last forecast, which called for a 9.7% growth rate ending in May of 2023. So they are admitting to a slowdown, but they still have homes appreciating close to 8% over the next 12 months. Zillow's home value forecast predicts a sharp slowdown in annual home value growth from the current pace of 19.8% to 7.8% growth through June of 2023. The new forecast predicts a steep slowdown in appreciation before stabilizing to pre-pandemic levels. According to CoreLogic, home prices nationwide, including distressed sales, increased year over year by 20.2% from May of 2021 to May of 2022. CoreLogic reported that prices will increase by 1% from May 2022 to June 2022. And then they went on to say they believe prices will increase by 5% from May of 2022 to May of 2023. This is the latest projections from CoreLogic, so I know it's a month behind, but we can still compare apples to apples to see where they sit in compared to Zillow. So Zillow said 9.7% in May, and CoreLogic is saying 5% in May. So Zillow's already reduced their projected forecast to 7.8% starting from June of 2022 to June of 2023. We can only imagine that CoreLogic will probably be less than 5%, but I will definitely let you know as soon as those numbers come out. Regardless, they are both still projecting a pretty significant growth in home prices over the next 12 months. Zillow happens to be double what CoreLogic says, but that's pretty much par for the course when we've seen with Zillow. They tend to be definitely more ambitious than CoreLogic or Redfin. This is very different from what Mark Zandi, the chief economist at Moody's Analytics, told CNBC on Wednesday. Take a look. You know, parts of Florida, Atlanta, they're buying with the clear intent of selling very quickly. They'll get wrung out very, uh, very fast and that'll bring prices in much more significantly. So in those markets, in the Southeast, Texas, Mountain West, I would expect to see some meaningful price declines. Nationwide, you know, maybe prices go flat for a couple, three years, let, let incomes and everything catch up. But in those juice markets, I, I think you should buckle in. Uh, we're gonna see bye some Bye bye Boise. Decline. All right, uh, uh, Mark Zandi, thanks man. So basically what he's saying is that nationwide, he thinks that prices will go flat over the next three years, which is very different from what Zillow and CoreLogic are saying. But he does say in markets like Phoenix, Florida, and Texas, and other overvalued markets that they cited, that the price declines could be really, really steep. Zanny also explained that even though industry insiders are reporting the median sales prices have increased, that they don't actually reflect the current market because prices have actually gone down. So let me explain. According to Redfin, the median home sales price has gone up 11% year over year to $389,200 for the week ending July 17th. Zanny explains that the median sales price has gone up because the higher priced homes are still selling, while the lower priced homes aren't because the buyer has been priced out of the market. So the data is taken from the homes that have sold, but they're just more of the higher priced homes. So it's a bit misleading. Take a quick look, because I think this is really interesting. Not so, I mean, I think house prices have peaked. I mean, you're looking at the median price and the reason why that rose is just compositional. You had a lot of more homes selling at the high end of the market, a lot fewer homes selling at the low end of the market because first time home buyers are locked out. And that causes that price measure to jump, to increase. So I think he explained it a little better than I did, but you get the gist of it. These median home sales prices may be a little bit misleading because of the data is taken from the homes sold and those tend to be the higher priced homes 
right now in the summer of 2022. Let's get back to Zillow. Zillow reported that 5.46 million homes are expected to sell in 2022, a 10.8% decrease from 2021. The National Association of Realtors reported that seasonally adjusted sales hit a rate of 5.12 million last month, the lowest since June of 2020, and below expectations for 5.38 million, which kind of makes sense because with the higher interest rates and the higher prices, a lot of buyers have been priced out, especially the first time buyers. They're simply locked out of the market. And then you have the buyers that may want to upsize and they're locked in because what are they going to do? They're going to sell their house that they have a really low interest rate right now to then go buy one with a much higher interest rate? Most likely not. And rents are through the roof. So that's not a great option either. So where would more sales come from? Where would more inventory come from? Well, foreclosures are steadily climbing back to pre-pandemic levels, but still not enough to make a huge dent in the inventory. Now, this may change with inflation now at a 41 year high with ridiculously high prices on everyday needs like food and gasoline. I certainly hope not. That's not the way I wanna see more inventory. And I'm still pretty confident that most people really gained a lot of equity in their homes in the last two years. So I'm hoping that foreclosures won't be the reason. And as far as new construction, US News just reported its latest data, which shows that both housing permits and house starts are both down. Kelly Mangold, a principal at RCLCO Real Estate Consulting, told US News and World Report, there is a lot of uncertainty about future conditions and the lingering possibility of a recession has caused both builders and buyers to take a temporary pause as they adjust to the evolving markets. Builders know that buyers are gonna have more and more choices of resale homes as inventory does come on the market, which causes them to pause and slow down. As such, Zandi believes that the U.S. housing market is entering into a deep freeze. So where does all this leave us? If you're a buyer and you find your dream home, you should go for it. But you should really try to negotiate the best deal you can because I really believe that sellers are starting to panic. So get that inspection and try to negotiate the price. See what you can do. Remember, you can always refinance if interest rates go down. And if you're a seller, you should probably get your house on the market as soon as possible while inventory is still really low. But just be prepared. Make sure it shows in the best way possible and it's priced right. So let's end this video by looking at some of the present data from Redfin on the current housing market so you can make the best decision for you and your family. The data in this report covers the four week period ending July 17th. Redfin reports that pending home sales, homes that are under contract, were down 15% year over year, the largest decline since May of 2020. On average, 7.3% of homes for sale each week had a price drop, a record high as far back as the data goes through the beginning of 2015. For the week ending July 21st, 30-year mortgage rates rose to 5.54%. This was down from a 2022 high of 5.81%, but up from 3.11% at the beginning of the year. And this is crazy. The monthly mortgage payment on the median asking price home hit $2,389 at the current 5.54% mortgage rate. This is up 45% from a year earlier when interest rates were 2.78%. Active listings rose 3% year over year, the largest increase since August of 2019. I expect this number will go up in the next couple months, but until sellers really feel like they have a place to go, inventory will still stay very low. I hope you got some value out of today's video. I really try to bring you the most up-to-date information so you can make the best decisions for you and your family. If you did get some value and you want to show our channel some support, definitely smash that like button, comment below and subscribe to our channel. And if you're interested in other housing market forecast videos, definitely check out these other ones. They're from different industry insiders. So there's a lot of good information there. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Bye.